Well, you couldn't have Avatar unless you had the Scorpion King. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. We were built. Built steps, yeah. We were built on the shoulder of the kings before us. <laughs> Scorpion Kings, to be exact. <laughs> Vincent Van Gogh, you know, people told him, you can't be a great painter, you only have one ear. You know what he said? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> yes, we are back, <laughs> waiting to try. What was that? That was uh, Gardner Minshew, the, the Monty guy of NFL quarterbacks. <laughs> I can't hear you. Uh, God damn, it's a finesse thing. <laughs> Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. We did it. I'm we Sergio Lopez. I'm Joshua Lovier. <laughs> yep. We are back with another episode. Yeah. Three in a row. We're <laughs> on a roll now, guys. Yeah. No more, uh, where's the pod guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. We did it. Yep. Uh, so it's been two weeks mm-hmm. since we last met. Uh, there was a presidential debate, a coronavirus of the president. Yes. <laughs> Town hall meeting. Uh, Did you watch any of that? I watched the debate. Um, yeah, I watched the debate while doing a first pass on <laughs> something in my, uh, on the painting. What painting was that working on? I can't remember. Uh-huh. But, uh, I, it was hilarious because I stood back like after like it took the time to I think I was working on a face and it took the time to paint the face that the 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 bait bait was was, yeah and so I like stand back and I'm like this fucking sucks (laughs) yeah and I'm like oh god damn and I'm, I'm like pretty comfortable like there's like you know some paintings you go through like an ugly stage yeah um but if it, it's like one of those times where everything felt, you know, like I should have gone left when I went right kind of feelings. Sure. Like everything I did felt like the wrong <laughs> yeah. shit. And then the debate ended. And then I was like, all right, let me, uh, let me put some music on. And I put some music on and I was immediately like, I was like, I, I started, I, I continued painting. And I was like, why the fuck did I paint while listening to that shit? Like, <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. That was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> um, but I don't know. It felt like a thing. You know, it, it kind of felt like the Super Bowl. Like uh, everyone was going to tune into this one. Right. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. For people who like shit shows, it sure delivered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for people who love, um, I don't know the word, uh, the verbiage for when people play with shit during sexual activities. (laughs) (laughs) Scat play. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Uh, But yeah, yeah. so I watched that, or I read little things about Donald and his Rona and people. Uh MJ's like crossing her fingers like, I never wanted anyone to die. (laughs) This is my one chance. (laughs) Yeah. I don't (laughs) think she was alone. (laughs) This is my one, um, my one time. Mm. And I was like, he's going to let you down. Yeah. 2020. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Why would it get better now? (laughs) I am. But uh, yeah, I remember hearing that Twitter was trying to ban people who like wished him death <laughs> really yeah because they were i guess they were just like well can be hypocrites now <laughs> yeah wait, wait what do you mean um, oh yeah because yeah, yeah, you know they'll yeah, ban yeah. people for yeah, yeah. for all the sorts of hate side. speech yeah. yeah 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 i suppose that's true uh but either way yeah <laughs> yeah but either way <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah it's always funny because like what like the last time we recorded, which was two weeks ago, we did like two episodes. Mm-hmm. We did the Sergio method where we we, where we do double up, we <laughs> yeah, double yeah. up on one day. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, but then like this year is so fucking crazy that like it seems like 
the minute we record then it's like is that even worth like is, it's almost like you have to like record and, and release the day off or else all of a sudden people are like that shit is so old right uh-huh. <laughs> yeah that's true like i'm sure we talked we talked about the fires i think it's like uh-huh seems like a lifetime ago weirdly <laughs> do you know what i mean even though even though you still s- smell a little smoke in there yeah it's also <laughs> like i hung out with my homie Caneva and mm-hmm. her husband gilbert which also yeah. the homie yeah and they um yeah they they lost their like because they live in uh they live on their on his parents' property, and okay. they live in like a granny unit. Okay, and that thing burnt down, so oh, they rebuild that. Wow. So they're like out of their house for a year. Damn. Yeah. Are they uh, just like in a temporary apartment then, or something? They're staying down the street at their uh, Canaba's dad's house. Oh, okay. Damn. Um, yeah. So that was I mean, the one. The fires that were off of Highway Twelve. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. It fucking sucks. Yeah. She. They lost like a bunch of shit. They have to rebuild the garage at the main house and some damage in the house and all that shit. You know, everything smells like smoke. So they got to figure out how to either clean out the smoke or or toss the shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, but for me, if, for like everyone that's not like directly affected, it feels like forever. You know what I mean? Like this, this year's just a weird one. It's going, I mean, it's almost over, but. Yeah. It feels like we there was like eight years in this last year. Yeah, this shit happened. That shit happened. I don't even remember January. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was something. Yeah, you're wide eyed and fucking. January hopeful. might have been when Kobe died too. <laughs> really? I <laughs> think so. Yeah. God damn, we should have known. <laughs> yeah. Um. God damn, Kobe felt like years ago. Right. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome to the Uplifting <laughs> Podcast, Way to Dry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is this what everyone is doing on podcasts? And I was like, God, and then fucking, then that thing happened. <laughs> God, and then, fuck, and then, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah. 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 So what's new with you? Just happened yesterday. Vanessa got her first taste of podcast drama. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. With the uh, with the food podcast of all things. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we did a review of a place um, that came out a couple of days or no, yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. The episode came out, and the the owner of the restaurant um, heard the episode and was very not happy with what we had to say. Uh, why? Because <laughs> what was the place? Uh, I don't know. Should I say that shit, Sergio? What <laughs> I just don't want to give them, uh, what do you call it, free press? <laughs> but that no, their place sucks. No, that's the thing. Like we didn't even say it sucked. Oh, but, really? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I guess the the place is called Four Street Social Club. It's a new place. Go uh-huh. check it out if you really feel like it. But <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we went there. It was a place that we actually had the person um, on for an interview uh-huh. a few months ago, and we were super excited to go check the place out because they've been promoting it hard on social media and all that and so last week was their soft opening this is like the vegan spot is that right yeah it's like vegan ish like it does have um meat um, things on it too but it's mainly catering to that okay so we went there and we had um we had a, a probably like three or four different dishes there and most of them we were into there was one that that we didn't really care for that much Uh huh. but you know we just did what we do on the podcast which is just talk about the food and like right. tell, talk about what we like and didn't like uh-huh. and uh yeah like we ended up like with a score between us of like eight out of ten uh-huh. just like that's fine for most people <laughs> right <laughs> that's a b plus right? uh-huh. <laughs> um, but uh yeah she was like super mad that uh, we had any negative things to say about it. <laughs> Silly. Yeah. And like, That's a good way to get better. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if she was just like super stressed out or what, but yeah, she like took it out on us and she wanted us to like take the review down and all that. Oh, and she was that. just um, like just going paragraphs upon paragraphs on our uh, social media. <clears throat> but Vanessa's the one who, who reads all that. So like she got the whole... Uh, of that but yeah it was, it was silly things that she was like really getting really defensive about like there was a, a typo where um she was supposed to write oat milk but 
it said oak milk and uh so like she had a problem with us like pointing that out she's like it makes us look sloppy and unprofessional (laughs) and it's like i mean that's Uh, something you did so yeah yeah god and yeah and i in a way i get it because i feel like artists are kind of like that in general Mm -hmm. like they're super like uh protective of what they create right yeah but then at the same time it's like i don't know I don't know. The the more like uh, that's the thing I keep trying to like think about, especially like the more and more like every time it happens on social media, every time I get someone that like, you know, they'll say something that's like, I mean, it doesn't sound like you guys did this, but like anytime you get like a, like someone who's just like, Oh, I liked, I liked it before you did that or, Oh, sure. Or uh-huh. some, you know, or something like that. Or like, oh, um, they'll just kind of give you like a backhanded compliment or sure. some shit. Uh-huh. Uh, and my go-to is usually to say, cool story, bro, or <laughs> yeah. to just delete it. Right. Um, <clears throat> because I don't want to like go down some like argumentative rabbit hole of like, fuck you. You know, you're talking about you little bitch. <laughs> um, but I keep trying to figure out a, a good way to like go about because i keep trying to think about what's a like a like there's a difference between like a criticism a critique and like um like a like a like the difference between constructive and unconstructive feedback it's not even i mean it's like the negative feedback on like if someone said that it's like the equivalent to someone saying like your work is beautiful (laughs) like i don't really care about the comment it's kind of like all right, what do you want me to do about that? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I liked it before. Okay, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do. Or people yeah, yeah. Are like, oh, your work is beautiful. I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I don't really care. It's like right. work at that point right. to respond. It's not like anything I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <clears throat> so I'm trying to like figure out if there's like a, I don't know, a way to like be like. I don't know because I don't want to be like why I don't know if like urge like like uh, trying to get positive feedback is or not positive feedback but like a more it's almost like saying if someone says like I like it I liked it before if I was like why mm-hmm. maybe I would get a better response right or if someone themselves thought that Mm -hmm. why did i like it before then was like i liked it before because that would be more interesting yeah that's a good point but it's like this like there's no why it's just people just Mm -hmm. telling me like a dumb opinion and i'm like (laughs) yeah what am i supposed to do with that shit like (laughs) i just have to throw it away now Uh like yeah but uh but i i mean back to what you were saying I, i get the I get the like def- the immediate like defensiveness, like uh, especially uh, someone who's creating something gets mm-hmm. because you you think everything. First of all, you think everything you're doing is awesome. That's why you're doing it, or at right. least hopefully that's why you're doing it. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's also if you gave them an eight out of ten, like relax, and you don't need to <laughs> micromanage someone's fucking Instagram. Yeah, uh, or not Instagram, but their podcast. Right. And it's like, you can, if you, I mean, I get if like, you don't want to, um, share, like if you feel like the, the thing is, is, uh, too negative overall, which I mean, I don't think we were, but at the same time, if that's just how you feel, you don't have to share the whole thing. You can just like, if you want to just cherry pick the part that, that makes you look good, that's fine with me too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, it seems weird that they would just want to just take down have us take down the whole review just because there was a couple of parts or yeah fuck all that noise yeah that's i mean they mean like the episode Is yeah it? fuck that <laughs> that's psychoness right there that's that's full-on crazy yeah um i mean we ended up doing it anyway just because we're just like well who we don't need this drama right now like, you guys need is a josh in your fucking podcast <laughs> you're like fuck that i'm gonna go harder next week <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's more like we're just doing it just for fun anyway. So it's like I mean, I get anything it, that like, makes it not fun. How? how I think there's an importance to being authentic. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. especially like in this day and age, we're like, I mean, if you pay attention to most people who have some sort of success in like platforms outside of like 
standard television, a lot of that goes to like authenticity. Yeah. You know, of being like not feeling like you're watching something that's curated or or like politically answered to like, you know, ease I don't know. Every it's it's not like a how can I say something without offending as many people as possible. Right. And I think having the ability to like see someone who like has an opinion and and uh isn't like uh, tiptoeing around it to please people. Mm-hmm. But with the not with the intent of hurting anyone's feeling, it's just with the like if I didn't like something, I'm not going to like pretend I didn't like it. You know, it's like that wasn't a like uh, I feel like I've never been to a restaurant where everything they make is good. Mm. I've been to like I mean we went to a a place called Lazy Bear in San Francisco. It was an eight hundred dollar uh-huh. dinner. Yeah, damn. And there were things on that menu that I was like, this isn't good. Mm. And they're a fucking two Michelin star restaurant. Wow. But it's. To me, the whole, it's fucking diner. I mean, like the whole thing is like banquet table. So you sit oh, okay. with a bunch of strangers. Okay. And we all were like, I didn't like that. And we were like, yeah, I didn't like that either. That was kind of garbage. Mm. Oh, really? And guess what? That's how we fucking felt. But they're also a risky, they take risk in their restaurant. Okay. So guess what? They're going to miss a few anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're going to be like that shit maybe didn't hit the mark, but we're like pushing our cooking skills and techniques and imagination to like as far as we can go obviously you're gonna miss a couple Mm -hmm. at least that's what i would hope they would think so if i was like i didn't like that hopefully they'd be like yeah yeah, we'll we'll work on it or like what was the issues Mm -hmm. you know or why yeah i guess is the good question Uh, yeah i would think that uh, a restaurant that's really trying to be an excellent restaurant that would be um their idea behind it like their creativity or or if you want to like dare i say artistry of what they're doing is like oh we need like constructive feedback every so often yeah improve like especially since them being brand new yeah i figure they would want like the people people who are there who who are invited to go to the soft opening i think that that was kind of like what what they were hoping to get was like good feedback on their right on their dishes so i don't know it seems weird that they would take yeah. such offense to, <laughs> to silly yeah and then yeah and it's also like a taste right it's yeah my taste so if someone else loves that thing mm-hmm. then fuck it <laughs> like it it's each personal taste is different so right there's plenty of foods that i love when people are like i don't eat mushrooms i'm like you're a dumb bitch (laughs) you know (laughs) and i hate your guts but that's because their taste is wrong (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) but you know what i mean it's like it's like uh it's the difference between someone saying i like just like uh your opinion man (laughs) right (laughs) exactly (laughs) so it's like it's like, if you listen to country, you listen to fucking country. It's not my job to convince you to stop listening to country. Right, yeah. If I eat a dish and I'm like, that's not for me, that doesn't mean, that might not mean that that thing sucks. It just means it's not for me. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it sucked. I don't fucking know. I wasn't there to eat this. What was it? What was this thing? Oh, the thing that wasn't great? Or, yeah, yeah. Oh, there were these, uh, oh, well, I'll just tell you what, what I, <laughs> uh, it was these, uh, grilled cheese sandwich, um, with, um, Oh, they messed up grilled cheese sandwiches. Uh, yeah. So what they did was they, they put the, um, the tomato sauce or mm-hmm. it's basically, it's supposed to be tomato soup, right? With, with the grilled cheese. It's like okay. the main thing. Oh okay, yeah. Like, t- right. Grilled cheese and tomato. Yeah. Tomato soup. And so they put it in these little shooters and like, it was almost like there were these little grilled cheeses that were the garnish mm-hmm. instead of being like uh, a plate itself. But the problem was like the sauce was super chunky and like it, uh, there was no way to actually shoot this thing unless you want to like <laughs> chunk <Choke>. it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And then um, the sauce wasn't like really like tomato soup. It, it was like tomato sauce. I keep calling it sauce just because that's how it was. It was like, a, a, it was almost like a spaghetti sauce. Right. So, and then there was nothing really special about the, the, um, the grilled cheese either. It was just basically just like a, a standard cheddar with the, like, like on like a grilled white bread. So there was nothing White really bread. Not even a sourdough. And maybe it was sourdough, but either way, it was kind of just very meh. 
but uh yeah so that was one of the things that we had that was like really the only dish that um that we both were just like nah you could like totally skip this one Mm -hmm. but there were other things that we liked a lot so right it's like yeah you just focused on the on the negative part that we talked about but either way like it was definitely like something like that i would feel like you would want to know okay maybe we should like kind of tweak this to make it better right (laughs) but yeah a grilled cheese is hard to make good in a restaurant i think oddly Mm. because i feel like i mean i don't know because it's I think it's one of those things where, like, if I if I make a grilled cheese at my house, like, I feel like ninety nine percent of grilled cheeses made at home mm-hmm. are gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like ninety nine percent of grilled cheeses made at a restaurant mm-hmm. aren't gonna hit the mark. Hmm. It's weird. It's Why weird. is that? You think? I think because I don't know. Because I don't know. Because the 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 great thing about home cooking is that you're you're one person hyper focused on one dish. Sure. Okay. And a fucking grilled cheese sandwich is hard to fuck up. Mm-hmm. So anyone can nail a grilled cheese sandwich. Mm. But my guess is if you're a chef and you have to cook a fucking grilled cheese sandwich, it's like an artist having to paint spheres their whole fucking life. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's I like, guess so, yeah. there's not a challenge to it. So there's this like weird, like, dismissiveness of it mm-hmm. is my guess that maybe yeah creates a shit fucking result where you're like this thing fucking sucks yeah where like if you just if the chef probably just took the time to like make sure they nailed it mm-hmm. rather than like pushing it out because it's food mm-hmm. it would probably be amazing um but it yeah, also sounds maybe. like they didn't i mean i don't know I, I like a simple grilled cheese sandwich anyway. So like if right. it's like solid sourdough, mm-hmm. decent cheese and like thinly cut onions, I'm like, I'm good there. Mm, no onions in this one. Uh, <laughs> no onions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but most people don't put onions. I just. That's true. That's yeah. that's my like, <laughs> whole, like the littlest pizzazz I can put into that dish to like make it interesting for me. Mm. If it if you add ham to it, is it still a grilled cheese to you? No, it's a ham and cheese melt. <laughs> nice. Okay. Don't fuck around with you people. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> yeah. What do you think? What's your opinion on this? Let's um, go fight. <laughs> as far as I'm, like, a I'm saying you agree with me, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will delete this episode. <laughs> um, yeah, like I still consider it grilled cheese if you add a little pizzazz to it. <laughs> Uh yeah yeah I, mean, I I I feel like I call it a melt at that point. Oh, okay, it's like a tuna melt or a ham and cheese melt or mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know I just a grilled cheese is I feel like if you add vegetables it oddly stays a grilled cheese. Mm, okay, <laughs> like yeah, sliced makes tomatoes sense. or mushrooms or something or yeah or spices, but the second meat is involved, then it becomes. Uh, a pressed or not a pressed yeah, sandwich, but like a melt sandwich. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I thought you said oppressive. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I meant like a, because you know, there's also like panini presses or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, mm-hmm. it's like, what's the difference between like a brie and ham sandwich? You know, like, right. Like a brie and ham, like that's like a common like sandwich where they put brie and ham in like a baguette or some shit, mm-hmm. put it in a fucking panini press. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's delicious, but it's a sandwich. Yeah. And that's just a fancy grilled cheese. <laughs> what about bacon, though? Do you consider it a garnish more or an actual? That's a good question. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, in the delivery. Yeah. Is it bits? Are we talking bits or strips? <laughs> yeah, bits? that's a good point. <laughs> that, is the, that is the key. <laughs> bits. Yeah. If bits yeah, it stays is, a, yeah, a grilled the... cheese or. Yeah, bacon it could be a garnish, which is weird. Yeah, you might be right. <laughs> Bacon might be the exempt uh, meat of all. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other hand, if you put some like a fucking veggie patty, 
not a, not a grilled cheese anymore. That's true. I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> There's so, levels uh, to this shit, yo. Yeah. How can we relate this to art? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if you, this is a uh, is the bacon the glaze in the, <laughs> the stuff, or is it the a layer? <laughs> is it the highlights? <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, the bread is the glaze. The bread is the glaze. <laughs> <laughs> like someone's yelling at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fucking, the butter. The butter's the glaze, Sergio. Yeah, God yeah, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> good old fashioned drama. How, how'd Vanessa do with that? Uh, she's not a good dealer of stress in that way, too. So yeah. she was just like, how do I make this end? <laughs> we're just like, all right, let's just delete it. Why, why do we need this in our life? <laughs> uh, it's so funny because it's like the... Um, I just imagine you and Vanessa in a room being like, uh, uh, mm, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 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 delete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were just kind of like, so what do you want to do with about this? I don't know. What do you want to do with this? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're like, we're like, we're like, if it's like me and you in this drum, I'm like, fuck that person. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will take them to the ends of the earth <laughs> right. for this battle. Right. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, we, um, we God damn, posted there's on, a, there's yeah. a fly in the room and I'm fly trying to murder room. it. Um, do you want to, you want to take this? Sergio? <laughs> Let's see. You have to hit the button on the side. Uh, well, now that it's all the, the thing in my hand it gets all scared <laughs> <laughs> i know we need two of those we actually have two i don't know what the second one is do you want me to pause this and i can grab it so we can really murder this fucking thing sure <laughs> look at now it's on my fucking side <laughs> bitch go back to sergio fart sergio bring your smells you have to hit that side button yeah oh, okay. that thing yeah that that makes it electrical oh all right yes learning the ways here uh-huh. uh-huh. So there's a fly in the <laughs> yeah. <living> room. <laughs> yeah. And it's a fucking asshole. It's like look, there's there's many different flies in the world we all have to learn. With different personalities, different yeah. food taste, <laughs> right. d- different loves of different art forms. Some like bacon. <laughs> some, yeah. And this one is one of those that likes to land somewhere on your fucking face like mm-hmm. a real asshole. <laughs> uh, right. It's like if you landed yeah, I mean, isn't there other shit than humans you can land on? I don't know how flies that land on people are, are like alive today. Because it seems like there should be like an evolutionary like deterrent to flies landing on human because your odds of living decreases. It does, but I don't think humans are necessarily a very efficient killer of flies on their own. Mm. Um Oh my god! There were the fly the flies when we were camping. Carmel were like specifically going to to land on either your face or your arms. It was the uh, worst. I hate that shit. It's like, yeah, they're like different type of flies. Too. Yeah, yeah. The uh, when I was in Australia, there were, there's these flies and they all all their flies there. They're like the flies where they land on your face, yeah, and then you swat them away, and they just move to the yeah. part of your face. Those are exactly the kind it's that we're dealing the with. Fucking worse. You eat a lot of flies on accident in that fucking country. Do you really? Oh yeah, my God, that's horrible. Like, you, like we played soccer a lot when we were out there, and you're like running. And then all of a sudden, like, <laughs> oh my god! And then I just ate that fly. Like, like there's no like coughing it back up, which I don't even know if that's better, because like. <laughs> You already swallowed it. Yeah. So like you're coughing it back up, which is make you have to land on your tongue a second time. Ugh. Yeah. So yeah, I fucking hate flies. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, flies are. Is that shit I don't like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so have you been painting at all? Yeah, I've been working a lot on um, landscape paintings for an uh, upcoming show uh, here locally. So nice. it's been nice to get back into the, stu- into the uh, flow of actual studio painting after um, going at it, going at the plein air stuff Hell yeah. hard this year. But yeah, it's good. Um, definitely been um, been happy with 
coming back in and, and doing things in the studio, it feels like it's more of an accomplishment <laughs> in a way. What do to, you mean? To work, like to make something like more substantial in the studio rather than doing like these like one and a half hour paintings all this time. Right. It just feels like, Oops. like you're just doing more. <laughs> Right. Like the results are, are usually better in that way too. Cause you're actually spending the time to make a, a good painting. So is that like a, is it like a cheeseburger with floral patterns swirled in and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's cool though. So yeah. you're, are you, have you showed like works in progress at all on these or no? Um, just in my stories on my landscape page, um, here yeah. and there. But yeah. Oh, so they're landscapes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. I saw you came out with. Have you dropped your classes yet? Um. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. That's an, another thing I'm working on now. Is Don't worry. I'm I'll help very you much in. Research, yeah. <laughs> I'm very much in like promoting mode right now. Um. Uh, about. Um. Uh, so I'm supposed to be doing a. Um. What do you call it? It's called the Art of Carolinas, and it's a uh, normally oh, like yeah. a trade show where they have people come and do demos for it. Mm -hmm. But you know, with the Rona, everyone's uh, we are frightened of Cornova. <laughs> Cornova, <laughs> how the fuck was that early on or something? Uh, what was early on? That, but oh, that no, it was like recent. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <So> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, so so they're doing, they're moving all the classes online. So they invited me to be one of the the people doing the, a workshop online. Okay. So they're going to do like the whole Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so there's three classes that I'm doing for that, and then. I've been trying to promote that and put things out, give a little teaser of what, what I'll be mm. teaching in those Showing things. a little leg. Is Showing that a little leg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging a little brain. That's another phrase we use for that. Hanging a little brain. <laughs> <laughs> that has to do with ball sacks. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hanging a little brain. That's hilarious. Um... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've been kind of putting the, uh, working on the, the, on my main class a little bit, um, to the side, although I've been working on that a lot. There's, um, I got, um, oh yeah, I got a new, um, beta tester with somebody who listens to the podcast. So shout out to David, nice. who's, who's a regular listener. Who's now a master beta. <laughs> yeah. Uh, beta master, master beta beta, master or, beta test. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Where's my cut? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been yeah, just been getting into teacher mode a little bit more lately. So that's been nice. been interesting. Does that make you wear like patches on your jackets more? Or yeah, I own, I'm exclusively wearing tweed while I <laughs> while I teach. <laughs> yeah, you're starting to get like an old English accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so how are you liking that? It's been pretty good. Yeah, it's been nice to um, talk about all the concepts that I've been um, trying to create. Mm -hmm. a, a course out of uh, just on my own and actually getting feedback from people like oh this is working this you could could fix or like make this better make it a little more clear right. and like yeah it's one of those things where it's kind of like the opposite of how uh you, uh, you don't people. tell them. Yeah. You don't tell them to delete their uh, delete yeah. their comment messages. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you you're making you look unprofessional. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting things happen when you take the feedback rather than. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it's been it's been really good actually. Um, it's been cool to see people actually like improving because they took my advice. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's so, cool. So yeah, um, been tr just trying to create like different like sort of free uh, giveaway material to teeth people into getting into the the actual paid classes. I mean, been an interesting uh, marketing kind of. Um, or sales and marketing mm. kind of uh, mode to be in. So just thinking about that a lot. Nice. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So does that like, uh, 
falling into that like teacher mode or whatever does that does that uh feel comfortable for you like like is it something where you're like i can get used to this um yeah i think in the setting that it is right uh-huh. now like one-on-one with people um right uh yeah i thought i would be a lot less comfortable with it actually mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's been okay uh if somebody is more difficult maybe i'll have change my tune about it but uh everybody or the people i've worked with so far have been pretty cool mm. that's all right <laughs> yeah. yeah nice yeah but uh so the the workshops i'll be doing are be like through zoom so um people will i think the way it will work is people will be like in the chat kind of asking questions and, and mm-hmm. that so it'll be a little bit different than one-on-one but yeah uh just doing like it's i figure it'll kind of feel like an instagram live where you're just kind of mm-hmm. painting but people will be more inclined to ask questions for you because they're they're they paid to to learn something from you so it'll be a little bit more um it'll be a little bit more focused on like actually trying to teach people things right so uh yeah just like trying to create a little curriculum for the class itself is um uh, probably like the next step for me like what i'm actually going to to cover in those three hours mm. so I yeah there's not much time either yeah so i think the balance is like figure out um not to over teach or like try to cram things right. into the the class that like how to how to start from beginner to pro right three hours <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but i don't know i don't know if people think that like in three hours they're gonna um like just watching a demo for three hours it's like do people have certain like way too high expectations that nobody has <laughs> or nobody can deliver on or i think at this point like most a- people are are pretty um okay with like okay i'm yeah i'm gonna learn well i think i'm assuming <laughs> if you're like kind of dev- like a little bit farther along in your development as an artist you're probably gonna be trying to find like little nuggets right of of information that maybe to us seems like common knowledge but mm-hmm. i mean uh you know, it's always, I feel like that happens all the time. Like I'll hear like an artist say something or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's what that thing is. I think that's why everyone geeks, like everyone on Instagram is like, what pencil do you use? Or <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. whatever. It's uh-huh. like, because there is, I mean, when they say what kind of paint you use, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> God, that doesn't, like that to me is like, just go like play around with like buy a cheap set of each one and figure out what you like. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, but like when I feel like when there's like little tiny details where you're like, Oh, they use like, or like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> like little details about little things is what I feel like I'll take from things. Mm-hmm. If that, I mean, yeah. Are there plenty of like videos you watch and it's like, Oh, that was useless. <laughs> uh, well, I don't really watch videos to like learn really. Oh, okay. In general, I, I watch videos in a weird way to kind of just like enjoy someone. Like I've talked about this plenty of times, but people that like do what they do at like a high level. I just love that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, to me, it's like, um, that that I'll learn like I might learn something based around their like mindset or something or like mm-hmm. you know things like that. That's what I keep. I th- I've I've the more and more I feel. I mean, because I feel like I've been I'm, I'm start. I feel like I'm starting to get really kind of comfortable in oil paints now. Okay. You know, I think it's been like four years of me painting in oil paints, but now I'm like I think I'm like. I feel comfortable like to take bigger risks now, mm-hmm. which is kind of strange to me because I'm like getting terrified that I'm going to get bored with it soon. Which I'm like, oh, what no. <laughs> the fuck do I do that? Yeah. Um, but hopefully not. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oil but mindsets. Oh, gone. Oh no, I was just going to say, uh, oil painting is such a massive thing to to delve into yeah i feel like it's really hard to get bored of it yeah yeah <laughs> i'm yeah I, I i don't think that's the case i just think like i'm like um and and it's 
it's for me at this point, like it's really more about like uh, the subject matter than anything. It's like okay. what I'm trying to say at this point. So if I'm bored, that means I'm bored of what I'm talking about. Okay. More than anything. I see. <clears throat> uh, what was this? But uh, mindset. Yeah. Something about mindset. Yeah, yeah. But just the mindset stuff. It. Uh, I'm. I'm realizing more and more of how like how much more uh, productive and how much more you can grow if you hyper-focus on those things mm. rather than, you know, what someone's using or, I mean, technique I feel like is very important. Like that's the, like, f that's like the, the fucking fundamentals, like set your like base down or whatever. That's where everything's built on. But like, mm -hmm. But kind of when you get past that, and I think when you start getting more comfortable with your medium, when you start hyper focusing on like your mental, the mental game of the thing, mm -hmm. it's crazy. I feel like how far you can push yourself in your work, like how much more uh, proficient you can be, how much more um, you can push your ideas to interesting places. Mm -hmm. And it's all like, instead of, you know, paying attention to, I don't know, even like outside styles. I mean, there's benefits of that because if you don't know how they're doing it, of trying to pick it apart and figuring out, oh, I think they did it this way. And like, oh, maybe uh, that's something I could add to my toolbox. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I think like <clears throat> the thing that makes me excited is like, is realizing how good you can get it like uh not letting your mind kind of retreat mm. uh you know back into itself or whatever or oh, uh, interesting or allow uh comfort to be an excuse to not work or like all these like little pockets of mind kind of games where it's easier to not do this or mm -hmm. like or you know this thing terrifies me so I shouldn't do it mm. Or whatever, like the, all these things are like um, fucking flies. <laughs> uh, our guest today, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I got that. Uh, Came my way, but I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just staring at this fly now. <laughs> Where is that? I don't even see it. Uh, it was flying around the mixing board for a while. Do you think you can toss that into this hand? Uh, it was over by the couch. <laughs> uh, hopefully Compelling. what we weren't saying was, uh, <laughs> was, uh, a nugget of something for someone. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, finish that, finish that thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. The, um, yeah, just, just kind of like being more aware of those things and then building kind of those habits around the mental like building good habits around your mental kind of like uh, uh i don't know mindsets that are beneficial to your work mm -hmm. is um is like the thing that i'm really paying attention to now mm. because it seems like it has it it really puts you in like a a really good stride, I think, towards pr uh, progressing as an artist. Mm. Do you feel like you're like on the cusp of, of getting somewhere new with your work? Yes, I think so. I'm kind of, uh, yeah, as far as like, I, like in a weird way, I'm like, I might, I'm, I'm interested to see where this next year goes. Because mm. I feel like I'm in a, I have no idea where I'm going, but. Uh, mm, okay i don't even yeah i don't know hmm. uh i feel like i'm <laughs> like we made the joke i think i don't know if it was the last mini set or whatever where it's like if you just fast forward to like your abstract part of oh yeah yeah 90 year old artist like you just <laughs> skipped you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> by the time you're 90 then you're like you're like uh doing 200 year old artwork right yeah <laughs> um but i don't know i keep um I'm realizing more and more how much I love like the backgrounds of my work. Mm, okay. And how much more of like 
like, uh, like the people I'm finding take like about a day or a day and a half of painting. Okay. And then the background stuff is the stuff that like, fr- like scares me. Interesting. And it is more interesting to me and is more complicated. And it takes like a week to develop. Hmm. And that to me is like the thing that's like, um, becoming more, uh, pleasing to me, but there is something about the figure being in the painting that makes it riskier. Hmm. Okay. It makes any sense. There is something about having something representational in your work yeah. and colliding that with something that's like potentially damaging to the work yeah and then finding something interesting in that Mm -hmm. by taking that risk that i really love oh yeah i totally agree uh so it's just trying to figure out how to like uh elevate that like how to make that even more Mm. you know how to because then i just feel like the more and more i like walk towards something terrifying Mm -hmm. the more i'm happier with the end result the more i'm interesting like, like that that what i what i just did um is something that I find super interesting, uh, super satisfying, and the process is uh, way funner than it usually is. You think that's because you took that risk and it paid off, so it's just more of a yeah accomplishment that and, way. And a lot of like the work I'm working on now is a is built on these i like so my process now for this body of work has been different than my previous ones but it's kind of been like a lead up to do do you know what i mean like i remember in my sketchbook a while ago i had like the exercise of writing making up a title we've talked about before making up a title and then creating artwork around the title Mm-hmm. And then yeah. the last show we were at, or we did when I was with me, you, uh, Jason Avery and MJ, mm-hmm. <clears throat> all that work was based on a, a poem, mm-hmm. right? So every right. title was pretty much set in stone and like the whole feel of the thing mm-hmm. was set in stone before I created the work around it. Yeah. So then this n- next body of work, all of the pieces that are like my main like I have like main pieces and then like a couple of studies and a couple of other things I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Like, um, the main pieces, all of them, they had for the most part, not all of them were titled, but they all had an overall idea that I've been thinking of and building up oh, Okay. for like months before I made the piece. So like, I think almost all of them, some of them, like the idea has been bouncing around in my head for years. And, oh, really? Hmm. And I've finally like, uh worked out how i want the pose to be and and i just and then like uh, one of the pieces that i worked on i had photographed it three times with three different models before i got the thing i was looking for um because it's just sometimes it just doesn't land with models i mean i use them for other stuff but Mm -hmm. but these ideas are like there's like they're in my head Mm mm-hmm and I keep, uh, they're much more like, uh, developed before I created them, mm-hmm. at least in my head. And so I have all these ideas. And so there's risky parts in my head that I have to do to accomplish the painting. But <clears throat> when you paint a figure and then you see the risk that's involved sometimes it's easy to just be like, Oh, but it looks cool right now. You know, like mm. I actually like how it looks. I don't have to do that part, <clears throat> mm. but kind of fighting that impulse is like the, like a really th- important thing for me right now of like, okay. Not being happy with like the painting and being like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it right now. And being like trying to see the idea till the end, whether it fucks up the painting or not. I want to like see. see the idea to where I want it to be be Mm -hmm. because if i stopped at last like five percent because of like it's good enough and i don't want to risk that to me that's like that doesn't help me at all Mm -hmm. it's just me uh being a little terrified of fucking up a painting Mm. but then when you come to terms with i can paint this person in a day and a half or two days then you're like all right fuck it like that's a day and a half two days i know that i mean that's two days but like i'll just redo it and like And be right back where I'm at in two days. Oh, okay. Interesting. You know? Yeah. I mean, the background stuff takes longer, Mm -hmm. but 
<laughs> you know, I'll just put some mineral spirits off and wash that bitch off if I fuck up or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Uh, worst case scenario. So, there, I mean, there's less risk if I think about that, which probably helps me more. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. It's it just, I don't know what it is. Because even with that fact that I could just wash it off, which I didn't think about when I'm taking these risks, but for some reason, there's like a hesitation. And if you build, uh, in my head, if, if, I, if I fight those hesitations, I think in the, the long, like when I look at the work I've created, everything that's like the risk is like, is like the thing I'm the most happy about. Mm. It's like, I didn't fucking, I didn't back down, you know, because, um, because it terrified me or I was worried about fucking it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like for you, the worst thing you could do is give in to fear of yeah. your own paintings. Yeah. yeah. Because I think th human beings are weird because we get, we get like, because the idea is that like the idea is comfort, right? Like mm -hmm. comfort is the fighting thing, but human beings can get comfortable in any fucking scenario. Like, mm. I mean, there's fucking Eskimos out there. Like mm -hmm. people are comfortable in poverty, you know, like right. not yeah. all, but there are a lot of people that are okay with that. Mm -hmm. And so you can yeah, be, sure. you can be comfortable in a shitty situation if you want. Mm. Uh, and so th in a, in a way th like being comfortable in your art is is that scenario but it's also being like the 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 opposite is like you can get comfortable in taking those risks mm, mm -hmm. and when you get comfortable in that then then you can do them in a way where you can get good at them and and do them in you know like a finesse it's a finesse thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh but yeah yeah, I, I don't know. So that's that's been like my big like growth with this body of work. I think it's just, I mean, and, and I could see like, I mean, this podcast I think is a big part of like working out a lot of my ideas and kind of getting to this point mm -hmm. because there's something about vocalizing it that just helps uh, you um, or forces yourself to kind of like work out your ideas more clearly. Mm. Uh, well, like, what's an example of something that you feel like it was a big risk to take in, like, a recent painting? I mean, I just used the color green, which I don't use ever. <laughs> yeah. And I was really happy with my painting before I used that color. How <laughs> funny. Um, and That's true. You don't use green a lot. No, almost never. Yeah. I use a little, like, greenish tint to skin tone, like a little bit. Uh -huh. And even then, it's it's more like a gray to most people, but to yeah. me, it's a green. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't use green a lot. Mm. And I do use green for this painting to, like, get to where I, I wanted it to be in my head. Okay. And I'm, like, really happy with it. Uh, MJ doesn't like it at all, but you know what I mean? Uh, she's a big bully and she yells at me and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but I was really happy with it. And maybe it's not that, like, maybe in like five years, I'll look back at that and be like, fuck, that green is ugly. But like <laughs> right now, it's, I think the like reward of taking that risk, I don't think it's really that, but like, uh, that adds to the value of that mm -hmm. green. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, it adds to me liking it more. All right. Um, uh, but but yeah, that, that was like a m moment. Um, because uh, the painting I'm working on now is called. It's it's based around tectonic plates, mm -hmm. and it's uh, so. So I was talking about it before with Carl Dobsky, where I was like working around these ideas of like the three, like three key narratives, I think of like object in motion, oh, okay. an object colliding and object like stagnant or, or still. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, um, and so this show I'm working on now is tied, or it's like my group of, work, my body of work is called um, An Object in Motion. Okay. And it's so all these like ideas of, um, 
are based around like a, like for the most part like an object moving mm-hmm. um and so so this idea about the tectonic plates is is about like you know the theory around tectonic plates being that there's plates kind of shifting underneath everything that creates continents and oceans okay mm-hmm. and then so from there i created this image where there's a human being like sliding off you know like something like a like it looks kind of like a sidewalk or something like yeah the way it's mm-hmm. lifted up mm-hmm. uh, um and so in my head, the idea behind the background is that I needed to put brown underneath the, the, the like as my base coat. Mm-hmm. And I wanted it to be like a, I don't know, like a warm brown or something. And then I wanted greens above it so that it looked like a, kind of like a view from an airplane, but not necessarily like hit the nail on the head type of view. Okay. It, I just wanted that feeling. And then I wanted to use something to scrape away scrape away the green mm-hmm. uh, okay. from the uh the bottom platform let's say of the mm-hmm. of the tectonic plates sure um to to um and and maybe like uh for like two or three inches like not a lot i wanted to scrape away just like a little bit mm-hmm. and that uh, with the idea that that's to define the movement of that plate going away mm-hmm and um and to do that i needed and i wanted there to be like a brown showing when you scraped away the green Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense okay it's like yeah yeah. it's it's almost to like feel like earth without like being so like obvious about it Mm, okay um because i don't think the viewer is going to like have this explanation attached to it so it's kind of like it's to have these like tones that explain it at least hopefully enough so that when they read a title they can like maybe pick apart things and 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 walk their way through it Mm -hmm. um but i knew that i needed to put that green over so that when i scraped away that it it had that that moment like it needed that moment of to explain a good amount of what the painting was about about like something moving away from that objects in motion, like that tectonic plate is moving away and it, and it's creating this change in the human being, the, the figure that's in it. So mm-hmm. that with the idea of like a slow, it's this idea is supposed to tackle the slow changing of people or relationships. Oh, okay. Hmm. Of like the idea of like, you know, there's obviously like my husband cheated on me and now we're over, but there's also like that slow corrosion of relationship or mm-hmm. like the opposite of like uh, people becoming really good friends or, you know, or like a strengthening of a relationship or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like this idea of, of things changing at such a slow pace that you don't notice the change. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, you know, things are different. Um Yeah. So it's trying to like tackle all these things using this idea of, you know, something that occurs in nature and but attaching it to like human experience and playing off of both of those things together to kind of explain my idea, but then having, trying to think about these ideas and then execute them there's all these moments where you're like, fuck, I really want, like, this is like a a crucial part to the idea, at least for me, Mm -hmm. but I like how the painting looks now. And I don't know if this green's going to fuck it up. Mm, Okay. Um, yeah. (laughs) So, so yeah, that was a moment of, uh, yeah, I think it took me two days to do it. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, I'll work on other shit. I, I don't know if I could. Do it. I just had to like build up the confidence. Interesting. Huh. Uh, to uh, do it. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if. Um, I'm curious of like the perception of the listeners that are that you're just like, you know, uh, to them that they that you come across like, like oh wow like. You're actually like still yeah like like wow he's still actually like scared to like do something sometimes <laughs> i mean well that's the point right i mean if you're not being terrified you're probably 
stagnant like in my head that's like yeah like i just oh i almost always want to be terrified of what i'm creating hmm. uh you know if if not then what the fuck am i doing like because i find that's where you're learning the most because that's fear comes from the unknown if you're fearful of what you're creating that means you have no idea of what you're about to do mm -hmm. and if it's going to work or not so that means you're going to learn the most from that rather than like uh i mean there's other ways of learning right repetition is a great way of learning mm -hmm. and that's a slow um uh incremental like growth yeah. which is great and i feel like but that comes naturally i mean through just the habit of painting mm -hmm. you know you're gonna just grow incrementally but then i think the biggest chunks of growth come from attacking those big fears right but obviously that's all based on fundamentals because i'll have people being like oh yeah i'm fearless too like and then i like look at their work i'm like you don't even have the fundamentals to be <laughs> fearful <laughs> like you don't have anything to ruin mm, you know interesting yeah um uh, so but it's just you know it's it's a lot of shit art when they, they can almost like sense it. They're like, oh, I'm fearless too. That's why I just go and let my body do the the ideas. I'm like, that's not what I'm saying, but whatever. <laughs> whatever gets you through the day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah the, the, uh, I mean, they're confusing like fear for intention, which is also another important thing to me what do you mean you know like the intention within your art like the intention of like movement with your brush you know like all these th like intention is such a huge part of art is like mm -hmm. like uh, why i do what i'm doing right is there's a reason you know like why like the process of painting there should be intention to why you're doing it. you should like stumbling upon things accidentally is fine but I don't think it's a, a great way to go about um, progressing as an artist. Mm -hmm. Where if you move, like, like if you use intention through your work, whether that be like, it could be a narrative thing or a non-narrative thing. But even if like how you apply your paint, I think should be very intentional. Like mm -hmm. it shouldn't be something where you're like, I just let my body flow. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I see what you mean it's like uh so I mean, like oh okay so they're uh kind of conflating fear like lack of fear with just being like right. um uh not like i guess days of yeah yeah <laughs> uh, or spiritual or whatever <laughs> you know like sure uh using uh lackadaisicalness is like a as their version of spirituality right um when i think in all honesty like creating something great is is much could be much more spiritual or much more moving than mm -hmm. like your your scribbles yeah. that you've convinced yourself is somehow spiritual like yeah yeah i could agree with that you know uh because it's i don't know i mean yeah maybe to you but <laughs> yeah um, well i guess in that way like if they're comfortable with you know making their spiritual scribbles um <laughs> they uh yeah, they can do whatever the fuck they want man. but like if taking a risk would be like i don't know if they're used to doing like weird like tie-dye colors try doing the thing in like black and white or whatever see if that scares you or not yeah or something like that i don't know yeah and or, or if you're doing swirls try to like do a geometric thing or something or i'd be i'd be surprised if that person isn't terrified that they won't be good at art, so they don't try to fucking get good at art. Mm. To be honest, like, I feel like there's a lot of people who they're like, "Oh man, I wish I could fucking do that," or <laughs> you know what I mean. And you're uh -huh. like, "It's like that's that's that mind game I'm talking about." That like whole like, "Oh man, I, I, I mean, I know artists that are like, oh well, you do that, you know, but I, I could never do that." And you're like, "You're a fucking artist. Like, if you work on it, you'll get better at it. Like, mm -hmm. that's how it works. Like, you should know that." But it's that like weird mind game, you know, where the, it's like uh, they're talking themselves out of shit. Yeah. Before they fucking that's what what's his name? Uh, God damn it! I'm so bad at names. Uh, uh, he's a listener of the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, his his Instagram handle is a uh, bald head. Him with the bald head. 
oh, uh, are you talking about uh, Dubrovsky? Yeah, Dubrovsky. <laughs> yeah. Like, that motherfucker's always like, uh, he's like, oh, man, when I, uh, I'm not good enough to get paid. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Go get paid. Like, <laughs> yeah. Stop letting people use your fucking skills for free. Mm. You know, it's like you're talking yourself out of it. Before, like, you or like, uh, I'm like, oh, I need motive. He, he's told me, like, oh, can you motivate me to paint? I'm like, go fucking paint. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Like, stop wasting your time. That's funny. He goes to you for that. <laughs> but it's like your mind, like your mind, your, it's like your mind is the weak point at this point. Like, you, mm. you need to fucking build those good habits in that realm where you're like, you're like, all right, how do I make sure I fucking paint more often? You just mm -hmm. like build fucking whenever your mind's like, I don't want to paint, just fucking go sit in your studio and mix your palette up or some shit. Right. That's right. like a trick. I don't know if I talked about that on here. I don't think you have. No. Where if I'm feeling like I don't want to paint, one of my tricks now is to go and mix my palette. Oh, interesting. And then it sets the clock, and then after the clock set, I ha I it's like I have to, I have to paint. Are you mixing colors that you plan on using, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. like skin tones and shit like that? So okay. I'll mix all my skin tones. Okay. And then I'm like, all right, well the clock is going, or else I'm gonna fucking waste all this paint, and, mm -hmm. and my mind doesn't allow me to waste the paint. <laughs> so yeah. now I have to, even if it's the next day. Sometimes I'll mix a palette, and that's all I do that day. Cause oh, I'm really? Like, okay. I don't want to fucking paint. I'm exhausted. So oh. I'm like, I can mix a palette. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So you mix the palette, and then I'm like, all right, tomorrow I'm like, I wake up and I'm super productive at painting because. First of all, my palette's mixed, so I don't got to do that. <laughs> yeah. And secondly, like the talk, the clock is ticking, so I'm like, all right, let's go, let's do this shit. And I got a full day of painting, and but it's like it's one of those things where I realized that I could do that to fuck to like force me to paint. Mm -hmm. It's a mind trick, is what it is. It's me going like, you can't fucking waste this paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that you set it in, That's go fucking true. paint. That's uh, true. Artists are cheap enough. Man. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's that, it's that, like, uh, that's the shit I'm talking about when you're like, when you're trying to fucking push your mind to like be productive or whatever. You got to figure out a fucking Michael Jordan, that bitch, and trick yourself into <laughs> right. being productive. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Another waiting to dry exclusive. Oh, yeah. yeah. uh, it's a tip for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an actual art tip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but just the tip. <laughs> just the tip. <laughs> God, exactly. we've had the worst jokes, <laughs> and they wonder why we have four and a half stars. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, um, that was a long rant. I feel like uh, yeah, it was only like ten minutes or so. <laughs> but yeah yeah we're good yeah yeah i'm i'm almost done with like my work uh painting so i'm like really excited because i want to get back on my sketchbook so bad oh really okay nice I'm so you're talking about painting. the painting for the show coming up next month yeah nice. i feel like i've been painting like non-stop for fucking i don't know how long now mm -hmm. and I just want to draw. Oh, really? Huh. Because um, uh, I get in these, I get in these, those kind of waves, you know, like I, I'll paint and then I'll take a break and draw, but I haven't had that ability to like draw. So mm. I'm ready for it. Nice. Uh, oh, so yeah, you've just been exclusively in the studio, basically? Yeah, and then before that was all the mural stuff. Oh, right, yeah, of course. And then before that, it was only, it was all the painting for the show. So, like, painted for the, sh I've been painting for the show, then took a break from that and did mural stuff, and mm -hmm. then came back and then been painting for the show. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and I stopped working my job at March, and I feel like since March... I've been doing that's that's I've just been painting nonstop since March. Oh wow, huh? I didn't realize that it had been that long since you like really hit the sketchbooks that much. You mean uh, the paintings? No, is that, isn't that what you're talking about? The sketchbooks, like oh, since I haven't hit the sketchbooks. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I could probably go look at my sketchbook because I always date them. Uh -huh. so I wouldn't be surprised if my last one was. Or there might be like one random day where I drew. Yeah. The one before that is probably like 
pre-March. Mm. Um, wow. <laughs> so. That's interesting because, like, yeah, when uh, before all this happening, like, it was pretty much a, almost a daily thing, right? Right. Well, it was uh, – it was because I hated my job. Yeah. And the only thing right. I had was, uh, was was my sketchbook at lunch. Uh-huh. So I was like, all right, well. Like, <laughs> was like, now I don't hate what I'm doing. Yeah. So. Well, I hated eight, it. But eight it hours like, a day. It was my one little beacon <laughs> of light during that eight hours. So I was like, uh, I'm not going to miss. Right. But on. since you were just been like, yeah. oh, okay, this has been like so much better. <laughs> yeah. But since I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I do miss being in my sketchbook, but there's not like, I'm not forced to be somewhere for eight hours. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to go like, fuck, this place sucks. I need to like, yeah. I need one little bit of escape. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, so yeah, I mean, uh, but but I definitely miss my sketchbook. Mm. I mean, what do you miss most about it? I don't know. There's, it's just that whole like mentality of, like this is for me. So it doesn't matter if it's bad or good or, or if the idea is tacky or, <laughs> or whatever. It's like sure. It's there's a lot of idea working out, mm-hmm. and there a lot of like figuring out like. Uh, visual vocabulary shit. Through, yeah. And that's like through representational shit where mm-hmm. like painting is, there's a lot more like, I don't know, moods and fucking, you know, like color can set a mood or whatever. So mm-hmm. a sketchbook is, it's like tones and, and representational shit is like a way to explain things. Mm. Um, so you don't consider color to be like a very integral part of your like sketchbook? No, not at all. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, because you like painting your sketchbooks, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I don't like set a separation like as far as yeah, as far as like doing color or anything mm-hmm. in sketchbooks. So yeah. Well, I mean, I mainly use just like a pencil and maybe like something to give me highlights because like, mm-hmm. um, moleskins have like a slight yellowing so you can right yeah i like a little white and yeah and paint sucks on on uh sucks on, on moleskin yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah there's the immediacy of pencil is like also what i love about it. it's like i could just mm-hmm. like pull out a pencil and draw right yeah for yeah. sure and other than the fact that i get like slowed down by all these questions about what pencil i use <laughs> yeah it's pretty immediate right yeah um you have to spend all your time answering each individual. Yeah. I use this comment. pencil. Thank you for asking. I use this pencil. Thank you for asking. I use this pencil. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, recently, someone was like, someone asked me like three questions. They were like, are you using oil or acrylic? If so, if you're using oil, what kind of medium? <laughs> also, what? how did you mix that green? This is what I did. The, like, how did you mix that green so that it was uh, transparent enough to, to have the brown peek through? Mm. And then someone was like, "They and ans- he answers all those questions on the FAQ. <laughs> you can go like uh, read them there or watch them there." Oh, that's awesome that people actually finally like <laughs> answer questions for you. <laughs> I mean, it's happened before. But <laughs> yeah. That's the most recent. And like, thank you, good sir or lady. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, funny. Uh, but yeah, that means you're getting popular and people want to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, help you out well i knew uh, the funny thing is like uh, the fucking podcast listeners like you can tell that like when someone asks what kind of pencil you use and i get like five likes on that i'm like you guys are fucking assholes because you guys are bumping this comment up to the top (laughs) oh that's funny um uh but yeah. yeah that's that's um our podcast listeners are real PCs. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm so tired of painting. I'm, do you have ideas that you want to? Not at all. It's the best part. I just let my body do the talking. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I just let spam with the spirit flow through my fingers. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, um, uh, there's no real ideas. It's just like, um, I feel like the way I tackle my sketchbook a lot of times is like, I just find an interesting pose I want to draw. Mm-hmm. I draw it. And then I think like, how could that pose explain something? 
Okay. Like that's kind of my, and then I try to build around that and see if anything interesting happens. So like you pretty the, much start with the figures yeah. pose as the inspiration and just yeah. kind of uh, Tack reverse on. engineer from there. Yeah. And it's just to see like, is there anything interesting that'll come from it mm -hmm. that I can potentially use in a painting or not? And then, then I just keep doing that over and over until I start like, and then maybe ideas will start forming and then I'll write them in my little like um, notepad in my uh phone and then i start building those ideas up yeah that's a cool idea um what's your like ratio of like hits to misses when it comes to that uh it's weird because i feel like it goes in waves like mm -hmm. like if i look through my sketchbook it's like oh wow that's really shitty that's really shitty that's really shitty i'm like oh that's kind of good mm -hmm. oh that's good oh that's good oh that's good oh that's good it's kind of shitty kind of shitty kind of shitty it's like it's like i get in these like weird waves where like things are like going well and i don't know why i should probably see because i like to write a lot of times in my sketchbook as well like randomly oh okay, like oh it's my birthday today or some shit or like or or whatever you know like mm -hmm. uh just to kind of like mark the time so when i look back i go like usually it's not a birthday it's something like you know i think i wrote like in 2016 around like 2016 really fucking sucked can't wait for 2017 little did i know <laughs> yes. uh, but um i'll write things like that for like the new years or whatever i think when my dad passed i have like i drew a sketch like the next day or the day of oh really hmm. and it's like uh i wrote something there but it's like all these like little marks of like oh like it like it's like uh looking at a photograph or something you know mm -hmm. it helps put me back in that time period mm. in that way oh, um, i see which isn't really its purpose it just i just it's a habit i've mm. always had um it's just something you get personal satisfaction of doing it. yeah it's kind of like i mean i yeah it's, it's just it's like i mean your sketchbook is at least for me is my diary in a weird way mm -hmm. so putting personal shit is like seems natural mm, i see Dear <laughs> that was perfect <laughs> uh but um uh but yeah yeah but we're uh, but i don't know it's waves uh, as far as like success rate yeah but i'm not really like I'm you're not, not really, worried about it either way yeah i don't give a fuck like if i fuck you just up, know that it's gonna like come out like yeah. one one idea is gonna yeah. pop out when exactly just doing it enough yeah. yeah that's true that is a good uh lesson for people just like just putting your ideas out there um you just know that not all of them are gonna be good ideas right for sure and and that's perfectly fine sometimes mm -hmm. you're like tomato shooters don't work <laughs> right yeah. you know what I mean? if they're chunky soup don't yeah and that's fine don't expect people to <laughs> not all your ideas are great <laughs> right yeah <laughs> um and sometimes you need someone else to tell you that right yeah you know give you an eight out of ten <laughs> review right. and if you maybe got rid of you know, uh, a grilled cheese and tomato shooter soup thingy. Maybe it would be a nine out of ten, or even a ten out of ten. Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. You know, that's all we're saying. Mm -hmm. Be open <laughs> to understanding that some ideas you have are shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't silence us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and it's also like uh, like w finding a place to like f work out all your ideas too. Yeah. Or even just like jotting them down. Cause there's so many times I have like a shitload of ideas on my phone, mm -hmm. of potential paintings. And there's okay. so many times where I look back at them like that is such a dumb fucking idea. Yeah. But it's like at the moment you're like, Oh, that might be a good idea. Let me write it down real mm -hmm. quick before I forget it. And then you look back and you're like, stupid as shit. Yeah. Like that is Josh, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. And then I like, you know, hurt myself. Right. <laughs> Do you ever be it? And as a challenge, do you ever just like, let me see if I can make this idea not so stupid? <laughs> well, I don't think I do that, but I know, I do know that like most ideas, I've, I think I have recently said this, but almost, I feel like almost every idea can be done well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't try like, yeah, maybe and I, I don't delete those ideas that I think are dumb mm -hmm. 
I leave them in there. So maybe one day I'll look at him and be like, oh, that is a good idea. Or I, I probably wouldn't even remember I thought it was a shitty idea. But I might go like, oh, that's, I could do something with that. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I can, um, but uh, I don't intentionally try to like dig it out of the hole of shit ideas. Okay. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And I see. I was I was like a, I've had this idea, but I don't think I'll ever do it. Where like I I I I, I compile all the shit ideas I have, and then I don't know if you have like a place where you write down your ideas. Yeah, I I haven't done it as much lately, but yeah, it's just usually random little, like, uh, like notepad on my phone or kind of right, things. Like, yeah, that's where I do it, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, what I was thinking is we could uh, maybe come and read them out to each other. The ones where we were like, we're never going to do these ones. Mm, and okay. See, and judge them for the tomato soup that they are. <laughs> <laughs> those ideas are chunky. You can't no like, one, shoot those. No one treats my baby Sergio like that. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm saying>. <laughs> 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 yeah i don't even know if i have enough ideas to do that with like i just don't i've been so out of the habit of of like jotting down ideas lately yeah. that uh but i'll see i'll see what i can find yeah i almost feel like it might be more interesting for me personally to look through like some of my old sketchbooks uh-huh. and look through old ideas i have on there right like as i was as a student and be like how what i think of them now as a yeah. Somebody like 15 years later. Yeah, you never know. There might be some gold in that bitch. <laughs> yeah. You might be like, holy shit, that's an idea I could run with. <laughs> right. Um, and I don't know, the, there's something to that too. Like, I, I've, uh, in like, uh, with, with muraling stuff specifically, I've been looking a lot at my older work as like a way to like see if I can, uh, create like recreate that in a mural form oh interesting and there's something about like my older work that kind of seems more suitable for public art than the oh, work really I'm creating now hmm why is that you think it's like less i don't know heady for a better, yeah i like, think so mm-hmm. easily more easily digestible mm-hmm. um you know which i don't know i i, I have no qualms with that like mm-hmm. no i don't think something being easily digestible is necessarily a negative mm-hmm. as long as it's done well mm-hmm. uh, so it's kind of looking back at those things and being like or like old sketchbooks and trying to like think of like how those can potentially be converted into mural work yeah uh, so you think like some of those ideas you didn't um pursue as paintings necessarily because they were too like easily digestible in a way like it didn't you didn't feel like there was like an idea about it that like you know the potential collector might like get bored of that idea because it's not enough to like latch on to for a long time no no i um i'm not sure how if I understood the whole question. Well, like for example, like a, a mural, um, most people, unless they like live in the area mm-hmm. are probably just going to like drive by the, the, um, painting and, and just, uh, take it in at first read. And right. like, that's kind of going to be most of the time. That's all they, they, um, digest it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with like a, a gallery painting where somebody's going to like live with the piece, um, I don't know if you if you think of it this way, but like uh, if you think about it more like, oh, this painting has so many different like hidden meanings or layers to it that like it's meant to live with so you can kind of dissect it yourself. Oh, I see what you mean. No, I I don't. That's not why I'm trying to like, I don't know if it makes it seem like I'm trying to dumb down my art for people. It's not that I'm trying to do. I think. I don't think these ideas, it's almost like I'm trying to create pop music, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the vast majority of pop music is horrible garbage shit, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are people who can make pop music good, right? like good pop music. Sure. And it's trying to figure out how to do that in a weird way. That's my mentality when 
like trying to tackle murals, at least right now. Mm -hmm. um, and a part of that is just because the viewer is going to be everyone. I mean, it's there's people that are going to galleries. So yeah, they're, they're going to, even they're going to be more aware of the art world if they're if they're going to regularly go to galleries and things. You know, they're going to be aware of things that the common person doesn't understand about art. Hmm. And so, to me, it's like, how do I create something that's easier to digest uh, for like the fucking ten year old kid who's walking by? but still be something worth saying. Mm -hmm. And how do I tackle that without trying to like do it in such a artsy fartsy type of way? Right. Okay. Um, you know, but, um, cause I don't think that's, I don't think it's, I think the main thing, I think a big reason why I, why like my older stuff is simpler and my, than my newer stuff is only because of where I am as an artist. It's like, okay. At that time I thought I was doing dope ass shit. That was super complicated, mm -hmm. you know? but like, but when I look at it now, it's much more easier to read. Uh, uh, I see. Okay. And, and so there was my, my, and so to me, it's like, okay, well, if I bring it down to there, I don't think I'm, you know, I don't know. It, 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 there's challenges that come with muraling that's that are that are more complicated that that make it interesting and more complicated that subject matter to me isn't like uh the end all be all mm -hmm. at least okay. for now it's almost like i have to bring myself back down to like that stage of artist mm, okay for myself as well mm-hmm because I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if I can tackle creating a piece with my mindset while painting a painting on a wall. Like, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I have the skill set or the mental ability to like do that yet. It's like, I have to work up to it. Mm. But that's something that that's a goal for you to yeah, get to that. Okay. I would say so. Mm. My goal is to yeah create some, really interesting artwork on walls mm -hmm. uh but yeah we'll get there when we get there mm -hmm. and maybe that'll be sooner than later i don't fucking know um when it comes to because you and mj do murals together of course but like mm -hmm. does that like factor into it like like her ideas for what the mural wants to be uh, sometimes. I mean, well, her mural, like, if it's her design, it's her design. Oh, okay. I'll, like, give her, like, like if I'm painting something, I'm like, oh, do you want me to do, like, this or that? But, like, it's her design. And then, usually, if it's my design, then... Is the design separate for you guys? Like, you, uh, one person handles the design, or, like, the, the concept and design for mm -hmm. each mural? Okay. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, I think so. And then we, I mean, we always... Me and MJ, we always are bouncing our ideas off each other. We're oh, okay. like, what do you think about that? And, mm -hmm. You know, and she'll tell me like, oh, I think it. And I go, I, I don't actually don't care. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> and scared. then when she tells you her ideas, you're like, oh, that's shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not good, not good. <laughs> yeah. And then when she asks me, I say, oh, that's horrible. You need to redo everything exactly <laughs> how I want it. <laughs> yeah. Or else. And right. then I show her a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> mm hmm you know, or divorce she, papers. Yeah, or divorce papers. <laughs> and she, um, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're always on deck. Check, check legal zoom, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a sponsor? <laughs> can um, be. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but we, yeah, we always bounce ideas off each other. And she, um, you know, and, it's always a hit him. So it's, it's like, how entrenched are we on the in the idea to like, if there's any. I see. Way. So mm. it's like, oh, that might be a good idea. Like, oh, yeah. Or, you know. Mm. Is it ever a thing where you guys are like, well, one person's like kind of into the idea and like, well, what do you think about this? And you're like, ah, it's not that great of an idea. And it becomes like, oh, okay, I'll take your word for that. Or uh, is it a thing where it's like, 
Well, let me figure it out then. Yeah. It's usually that. It's usually to figure out. Mm -hmm. MJ hates almost every single idea I have. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Until she sees my like work. And she's like, oh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, um, that's so, funny. So, yeah. So, like, for MJ, like, even when we're, I'm in the process of painting things, she'll hate it. Oh, really? Interesting. Until, like, the last, like, there's, like, 5% left. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Until you paint that orange. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, you uh, so, yeah, we have, like, this thing where it's, like, I can't listen we both agree that I can't listen to her feedback until like later on when it's kind of useless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when it's like, I'm done. And she's like, Oh, you should have done this. I'm like, ah, I probably should have done that. Uh, but before that, she's kind of like that Instagram comment that just like, I don't like it. And I'm like, why? She's like, I don't know. I don't like it. Is that uh, why you don't? take it as like constructive feedback because like well, she if, doesn't expand on it if she has something that's good i'll take it okay i always tell like i've had this argument with someone where they're like you need what are they saying they're saying you need like uh a mentor to like tell you when you're fucking up mm -hmm. and i was like no i don't and they were like yeah you need someone that's gonna tell you or it sucks when it sucks and i'm like anyone can tell me that like it's if you have a good idea, I'll, I'll take it. Like mm -hmm. if you like, I've had kids literally say shit that I'm like, Oh, that's a fucking good idea. Like actual kids. Like, yeah, children. like actual children. <laughs> and it's like, or f whoever, like people that aren't like art, art fucking mm -hmm. enthusiast or whatever connoisseurs. They're like, Oh, right. this shit, whatever. And I'm like, like hood motherfuckers. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, and I'm like, oh shit that's a good idea right like i don't give a fuck where the idea comes from if it's a, mm -hmm. if it's a good idea to me mm -hmm. i'm gonna take it and right if it's a good crit critique i'll take it or you know right but if it's just someone who wants to stroke their ego and be like this work sucks and mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck about like i don't i don't need that in my life i I don't need to, and I don't need one designator like shit talker in my life mm. to be like, you're my fucking Yoda or some shit. <laughs> right, I mean? right, right. I just don't have it. Mm -hmm. If you have like a mentor or whatever, fuck, go like, and it works good for you. I just, I didn't go to fucking art uh, school scam. You know what I mean, <laughs> right. Uh, as we all know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, I didn't go to art school and so I don't, I don't have that like potential mentorship and I don't, I didn't, you know, take Sergio's online course, which is available for <laughs> anyone who wants to beta test that now. Right. Um, I'm trying to be a university graduate. Sucker. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> uh, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I'm not, I'm not opposed to any idea. I'm also like, I think about my shit all the time. So when someone, you know, when someone gives you a shitty idea that they think, like we're artists, we think about this shit all the time. Right. When someone's like, oh, have you ever thought about that? You're like, a million people have already thought about that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a called an overdone idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you know, or some shit like that. It's like, um, but yeah, it's like, I think about, my work a lot so when you come at me like if mj gives me like a critique that i'm like that doesn't make sense for the final idea mm -hmm. then i don't care like it's like i get that you have this criticism but like like it doesn't help me accomplish what i'm trying to accomplish on this painting mm -hmm. you know right what i'm saying yeah i get what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah so would you go back to the restaurant sergio well, that's the thing. Like we were like, we, even on the podcast, we were like, we're excited to like try some of the other things on. The, welcome. Uh, yeah. Not that's welcome. What, well, exactly. That's how we feel now. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, well, okay. Well, not only are we not going, but anytime anybody asks us about that <laughs> place, they just be like, well, this is what, what they, what happened. This so. is what you do. If you go to that place, people, you go there when your waitress comes up, you say, how is the grilled cheese sandwich and tomato soup? And if they go, oh, it's delicious, then you don't trust their opinion. <laughs> right. And if they go, uh, then you go, okay, <laughs> what is good on the menu? Right. Yeah. 
And that's the tip you get. That's the tip of the day. <laughs> the second tip of the day. <laughs> right. <yes. laughs> for anyone in the Santa Rosa area who's, who's looking for a vegan spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, they had uh, something on the menu. Well, that actually wasn't vegan, but it was so good. And we talked about it a lot. And it's like, oh, okay, well, now I guess we're not having that anymore. <laughs> Uh, just get it to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Order on online. Yeah. Use a pseudonym. Use an alias. Yeah, <laughs> not Sergio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, not a bit saucy. I not think, affiliated. Anyway. I think you should go there and make sure the ladies there when you go and eat, and you just eat so smugly. You just eat, you like have like a sour look on your face mm -hmm. the entire time you're eating this thing you think is delicious. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> She's like, ugh. I'm just um, staring at her the whole time. Like, yeah. Yeah. The next review. Yeah. And then you mm. bring a little dumpster <laughs> and you yeah. try something. And, you, ugh. and then you just dump it into the dumpster, <laughs> right? In, all looking, making eye contact yeah. with her. And you're like, no. <laughs> you're like, next. And just order the entire menu. Yeah. And you do that for every single dish. That's a very expensive way and, to be spiteful. <laughs> and then you cut a horse's head off. <laughs> right. And you put it in her bed. <laughs> yeah. And then, I don't know. That's a movie reference for you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping for a bigger laugh, Sergio. Mm -hmm. for the horse's head. It's even more. I watched the movie Troy uh, again. Troy? That. <laughs> Early 2000s movie? Yeah. <laughs> How was that? There's a lot of long gazing into the distance. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Your favorite. Yeah. It's a lot of like, <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, who, it was one of those things where like, MJ was like, wow, these people are bad actors. And you're like, no, they're not. Like, this shows you how bad the director was. Like, yeah. Or whoever edited it was. Right. It's like, it's like they got the shot or the, it's like someone told Brad Pitt, all right, after you say this, look off into the distance over here. Yeah. And then he did it. And then they recorded it, and then they were like, that looks good. Cut it and fucking, it's done. <laughs> All right. Cut um, and print. Cut and print. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, but holy shit, it shows you how like a shitty director can really make actors look dumb. Because mm. <clears throat> who are the actors? Is it Brad Pitt? Is it Colin Farrell in it? Colin Farrell's not in it. Oh, okay. Brad Pitt's in it. The dude that played like the first Hulk. Oh, um, he's like Australian or some shit. Yeah, is that Eric Bana? I don't know. It was actually. Yeah, I think sure. so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, his name was Bana. Yeah. Who's David Banner? David Banner is like the name from a Hulk TV series. <laughs> <laughs> what a conga dinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it is. laughs> Uh, Never thought of it. Because <laughs> that's how an Australian would say Yeah, would say, yeah, that's say good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and uh, who's Legolos or whatever? What's that guy's name? Uh, Two from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, uh, uh, Orlando oh, Bloom. Yeah, yeah Orlando yeah. Bloom. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. Orlando Bloom. And then there's two female actresses. One of them played the lady from, uh, like, in Inglorious Bastard, the, like, the spy actress lady. Mm. Oh, shoot. I don't fucking know, to be honest. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the other one, she's been a bunch of shit, but it's, like, not my... She's, like, a... I think she's, like, a really credible actress, but she just plays, like period piece movies which is like not my oh, okay cup of tea mm -hmm. As, unless it's inglorious bastard of troy obviously <laughs> yeah or troy <Yeah. laughs> the other masterpiece of the 2000s <laughs> the other historically sound <laughs> yeah. piece of film <laughs> uh, uh what movie is angelina jolie and that's a period piece from that time is that something else it's not Troy, obviously, but... Oh, uh, Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah, called. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Historically accurate, speaking of. <laughs> I thought she was in a, a period piece from that time that's similar to Troy, uh, but... So what we have, like, so the movie period pieces from that time are The Mummy. <laughs> yeah. Indiana Jones. 
Uh, the best one. Uh, the like crystal got? skull. <laughs> yeah. um, crystal skull. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the other ones? Um, um, I'm sure. Uh, Three hundred. Ten, command, ten commandments. <laughs> Three hundred. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Ten commandments. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. I don't know. What other movies are from that time period? Um, that are period pieces. There, well, what else is there? I'm trying to think like Ridley Scott movies. I feel like he was doing period. Passion yeah. of the Christ. <laughs> yeah, that, there you go. That's a period piece. <laughs> um, oh, uh, what's it called? I ah, forget it. <laughs> what's the with Cleopatra? Is there anything oh. about Cleopatra? Oh, I was thinking of like an old one with uh, like that lady. Oh, are you talking about with uh, Elizabeth Taylor? Elizabeth Taylor, Taylor. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of that one. I see. Is that called Cleopatra? I th or did she play Cleopatra? I, I think Trump? it was called Cleopatra. Really? Huh. I think she was a Cleopatra in a movie. There's a new the the, uh, the Wonder Woman lady is supposed to play Cleopatra. Oh, is she? Oh, okay. Yeah, some people are upset about that. Why? Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's the, the internet. internet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you know, whatever. Mm. It's because of that. Like, she's Jewish or Israeli. Mm -hmm. I'm she's also Jewish, but <laughs> right. it's that like, you know. I that see. whole like Middle East beef that's been going on for sure. like, okay. three weeks now. <laughs> yeah, for three weeks. Just uh, started. Yeah. Hope they figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, but uh yeah, it's 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 that lady. Mm, it, okay. Was the Angelina Jolie movie was it any good? I don't think so. <laughs> it historical ac historically accurate? Probably. <laughs> All right, so I, did I have anyone like uh who was cursed and became a mummy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Rock was in it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. No, I don't the know. The Scorpion King. <laughs> Holy fuck! If you guys wanna, if you guys aren't familiar with the Scorpion King and you want to see the worst CGI ever created, <laughs> look up Scorpion King and then look up The Rock as a scorpion. <laughs> Holy oh, no. fuck! I feel like <laughs> I don't even in my head. I remember watching them being like, "This is the worst." I want to see that CGI. Now. Man, that's <laughs> Can do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, holy shit! I remember it like that was when like PlayStation One was out, and then I remember thinking, "This is what PlayStation One looks like." <laughs> yeah, or I didn't say or one, just, PlayStation Three or whatever was out. Yeah, the Scorpion King Rock. Got it. Here's some videos. <laughs> oh, what the fuck just happened? Scorpion King Rock, huh? maybe. That looks like a CGI version of uh, of The Rock. Uh, it's like, well, you couldn't have Avatar unless you had the Scorpion King. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> we were built. Built steps, yeah. We were built on the shoulder of the kings before us. <laughs> Scorpion face, to be exact. <laughs> Uh, all that dude was trying to love a knock to the moon, and th those motherfuckers had to kill him for that. That's fucked up. What to the moon? Hmm? Uh, the original Mummy King um, uh, was called, uh, or he. The reason he became that guy died and became like a uh, cursed uh -huh. was because he was in love with a lady named Anaxuna Moon. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a joke me and MJ always say because. <laughs> Look at that! Oh my god, he looks like the um, the bad guy from Shrek. <laughs> I know that's a, yeah. It looks like a Pixar film just inserted into yeah. like it's like uh, what's uh, who killed Roger Rabbit? You're right? Yeah, <laughs> modern day. <laughs> oh, it's so bad! Holy fuck! And he does the. Did he already do the people's eyebrow? Did he? I'm I, not sure. Maybe he did. I just. I think he did. Let me I was go distra back. distracted by. Uh, I think right when he comes out, he does the people's eyebrow. <laughs> it's like so cheesy. Uh, and this is when we were talking about like, there's a, anything could be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. This is a bad idea. Wait, maybe not. No? I thought he did do the people's <laughs> eyebrow. God damn it. <laughs> maybe. There's another scene of him, I think, outside, and it's like even more. Or maybe it was, uh, I think it's. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it does look like a like. It's so bad. 
What, what year did this movie come out? I have no idea. Two, 2001 is out. This, okay. Oh, 2001. That's The Mummy Returns. I don't know. Let's see. Let's Google that shit. <laughs> the Scorpion King. Scorpion King 2002, it says oh, on yeah. there. Yeah, 2002. Okay. Holy fuck. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's his name? Lord Farquhar or something like that from Shrek. The, oh, yeah. the evil prince guy. Yeah, that's what he looks like to me. <laughs> God. Oh, man. I'm tempted to watch that. That's like, that's like one of those movies you watch, like, you know, where it's like movie night with all the friends, and you're like, let's watch the Scorpion The classic. Yeah. 2002 classic Scorpion King. Starring The Rock and fucking, um, what's that guy's name? Brendan Fraser. Brendan, I love. Or oh, is he in the Scorpion King? I don't even yeah, know if he's in. They just showed him. He was fighting the dude that loved. But him. I thought that was the Mummy Returns that we were watching, right? Or oh, no? was it? I thought so. I don't think is the. Oh, God damn it! Man. <laughs> so, yeah, the Mummy Returns is. Oh, I see. And then yeah, the Mummy oh. Returns two thousand one. And then the Scorpion King is 2002. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I think that's a Noxu Moon right there. Okay. She was like, uh, for all you guys that aren't aware of the mummy plot, which is a classic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tale as old as time. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Lady Noxu Moon, she would be naked and they painted like this gold pattern work on her. Uh huh. And then if anyone would touch her, the king would know. Mm. And dude who loved her had to cop a feel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he saw and was like, oh, you must die now. And, uh, you know, I mean, love is love. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, yeah. So MJ always calls me her in Oxygen Moon. That's, <laughs> that's a funny joke we do. I see. Yeah. yeah. So maybe one year for Halloween, you know, I'll pull out the gold and black paint and I'll uh, dress up. <laughs> yeah. You'll be the Noxie Moon. <laughs> yeah. And if and if uh, there's a Sergio handprint on me, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe MJ will uh, be furious and curse us both. <laughs> and we'll come back years later as, um, as a sand cloud. I see. I was hoping that MJ would come out with like big pincher things on her hands. <laughs> you as a sand cloud, and you're like, I don't know, I guess I'm fine. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I don't need to like. Can I still paint? <laughs> yeah. Can I, still I don't need to like brush? eat your guys' <laughs> plane with my sand cloud. I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll remove my review. <laughs> yeah. Your sand cloud, Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, good times. Have we we probably hit it right. Uh, we doing? We're at one forty nine. So. Do you have anything? How how? Let's talk about how people can find your class before we. Oh yeah, end this thing. Um yeah, I have it linked in my bios on Instagram. But yeah, yeah that's probably the easiest way to get to it um gonna update my website so it makes that easier to find it on there too mm. um still doing beta tests so um yeah you can find that on there as well mm. and yeah that's pretty much it um you could go also to art of the carolinas.com to find the the class there but if you just go to me it'll be easier to find a direct link yeah. to it so and let, let sergio know when his soup is chunky he doesn't mind mm -hmm. right i will actually fix that for me <laughs> and i won't you know yeah tell you to delete your your yeah. instagram account or whatever <laughs> nice that's cool and you, yeah. you said you've seen like growth in uh your students so far yeah i have it's that's pretty awesome. cool <laughs> that's actually like pretty satisfying hell yeah <laughs> awesome yeah. Uh, anything else? Um, still, um, still doing the paint trips here and there. Kind of mm -hmm. slowed down a little bit on that, but um, yeah. Other than that, um, not a whole lot. Just working on on paintings for upcoming show. So 
if you want to see trees painted well, <laughs> coming soon. Oh, yeah. What's <laughs> the name of the show? Uh, I cannot remember off the top of my head. That'd be a hilarious name for a show. Can't remember. Trees painted well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about you? Anything? I, I got no, I got nothing till November. Okay. Uh, What's the I'm name sorry. of that show? <laughs> it's it's a four person show, but we all have like our Oh yeah, names. Objects in Motion, I remember. So yeah, <laughs> I have Objects in Motion for like my group of work and then there's like a name tying us all together. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is alternate universes or some shit like that. I don't know. I think got you. Name. Yeah, keep an eye out for that if you're in the New York area. I'll Fill you in more when it gets closer. All right. Hell yeah. Well, it's been waiting dry. If you're still listening, fuck off. Don't be afraid of Cornova. <laughs>